All right, I'm back. So this now, uh, in this video, I'm gonna look at three-dimensional geometry. Now, first of all, actually, let's not even look at three-dimensional three geometry just yet. This is three-dimensional geometry. It's a rectangle. <laughs> um, let me do a couple things. I'm gonna just get rid of the fill. So it's fine that it's black right now. We'll deal with sort of color and that sort of stuff later. I'm gonna just change the background to 255 so I can see it a bit more easily. Or I like to see where the canvas is, so I'm gonna make the background 175. Okay, now I'm gonna also say rect mode center. And let me make it like a little bit bigger. And let me actually make it a rectangle so we can see. Oh, look at that, whoa. Oh, cool, so look at this. This is such an exciting moment here. Why, what, what, what's that? So one thing, um, one thing you will soon discover <laughs> if you choose to embark on this journey into three dimensions is that shapes, if you think of like, oh, we're gonna make a sphere or a torus, which is like this donut shape or a pyramid, shapes are actually, three dimensional shapes, three dimensional geometry are really collections of lots of small 2D polygons um, all tiled next to each other. And we're gonna see more and more examples of this. And amusingly, through whatever sort of default rendering that's happening right now, um, I'm seeing the full, what's often referred to as the wireframe of this rectangle, which I don't know why suddenly that appeared, like when it wasn't before. Uh, as soon as, like, but, um, so let's see if we can, let's, let's see if I can say no stroke to get rid of that. There we go. And now it's white. I'm just curious, let's give it a color. Now it's black, ah, interesting. I don't know what I did before. Let's give it, yeah, okay. So I'm in WebGL and this is the thing. I can still work with two-dimensional drawing in the same way, but how can I prove that I really am in 3D? So one thing you might have noticed that no, no, that you could do, let's, let's, let's make a variable called angle and set it equal to zero. And I am going to, right before I draw the rectangle, say rotate by that angle and then I'm going to, every time through draw, increase the angle a little bit. Angle plus equals 0 0.07 you know, or something, some arbitrary number. So let's refresh. Now look at this. Cannot, what's this? Ah! Cannot read property transpose 3 times 3. Ah, this looks horribly and scary and awful. Let's see if we can find somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it would really be nice. Someday we're gonna figure out a way for P5 to give us a little bit of a friendlier error message. And actually, if you go back to that uh, processing.org medium blog, you'll see that um, Alice Chung has worked on this whole p 5 js friendly error system. But that's a separate, the reason this is happening is that rotate in 2D. If I have a two-dimensional plane, this is a two-dimensional plane and I say rotate, there's only one way to rotate. But if I'm living in a three-dimensional world, I can now rotate by what axis? This is the x-axis. So this is rotating along the x-axis. This is the y-axis. So this is rotating along the y-axis. Or the z-axis is the equivalent of rotating in 2D. So I could say rotate uh, z and refresh the sketch. Let me move this over a little bit. Suddenly, there we go, I've got my rotating square. Now, are we really in 3D? I'm not sure yet, but let's change this to rotate X. Now we can see the three dimensions. Look at this, it's like I'm very worried it's gonna hit me in the face. Now the important thing to realize, I mean this might be, seem so ridiculously obvious, but I feel obligated, I must state it. This is still a two dimensional plane. There's nothing three dimensional about this. All we have done is unlocked a separate rendering engine which knows how to create the illusion of 3D perspective. So who's to say whether I you know, have a square and make it bigger and smaller, is the square growing and shrinking or is it zooming in and out in the third dimension? But this is definitely an effect you could, as a coding challenge, I might say, recreate this without WebGL and you probably could figure out, like, could you like maybe oscillate these, these um, the vertices of this quad up and down to create this shape that looks like it's spinning. But this is why WebGL exists, so that we can just kind of do stuff without it. So I can also now say like rotate Y, and I can say, uh, you know, just can like have it rotate maybe like slower along the Y axis, 
And we can see now, here we go, I've got this spinning plane. Now, all we got to do is put General Zod in it, and we have the end of Superman 3. Is that right? Uh, flying off into space. Um, and I can add rotate Z, angle times 1.2, and we can see now I have all three axes spinning. So this is first step number one. Now, another, so, so that's a 2D, 2D plane. There actually is a plane primitive in 3D. So the question is, we can use two-dimensional shapes that can live in a 3D world, but we can also, um, and just like there are these 2D primitives, arc, ellipse, line, point, quad, rect, triangle, there are now this whole list of other 3D primitives. Plane, which is essentially what I've just done, box, sphere, cylinder, cone, ellipsoid, torus. Let's look at box. So I'm going to comment out this rectangle, and I'm just going to say box. Now what if I don't put anything in there? Probably I'm not going to see anything, I would think. Oh, look, it gave me some default. You can kind of see that there's something 3D there, right? It's a little hard to totally see because there's no shading, there's no lighting. So the three-dimensional illusion becomes much more prominent once we've added more stuff. But um, one thing you can see here that I can do is with box, if I say 200, now I have a box whose, what are the dimensions of a box? A rectangle has width and height. A box has width, height, and depth. So I can actually start to play with all of those. 10, you know, 150. And you can see now I have this uh, spinning rectangular box that has a separate width, height, and depth. So this is the basics of working in 3D, which is that you could just create shapes. Now here's create three-dimensional primitives. You can, you, you can color them and you can rotate them. Here's the thing though, how would I move this throughout the three-dimensional space? Well, rectangle, right? Rectangle, I give it an an X, a Y, and a width and a height. Box, I gave it a width, a height, and a depth. I think it's that order. Could I also give it like an X and a Y, like negative 50, 10? No, cannot draw a stroke. Something's going on like crazy. So that's just plain wrong. <laughs> the only way to position these three-dimensional primitives in three-dimensional space is with the translate function. So in 2D, you can use the translate function to move the origin point around and draw stuff relative to it. Same thing in 3D, but the translate function is really required. So if I did something like translate mouse x, mouse y, oops, and you can see I'm kind of like, whoa, somehow it's sort of moving. Now here, once again, this is the thing. I've really relinquished pinpoint accuracy of pixels. First of all, it's, did, I, did I translate before I rotated? Did I rotate before I translated? What I really wanted to do was translate before I rotated, at least for the effect that makes a big difference here. Because what I want to do is show you like I can, but remember, Zero, zero is the center. So if I really want to move it with the mouse, I'd probably need to say translate mouse x uh, <laughs> negative, oh my god, negative, oh, with, oh wait, wait, hold on a second. If I'm, if I'm, tra <laughs> oh, this is hard. If zero, zero is the center and mouse x is at the center, what do I want to do? I just need to subtract that center out. So I need to say minus width divided by two, minus height divided by two. And I now have this 3D shape that I'm kind of moving around with the mouse. But again, 3D, right? I'm only translating along the X and the Y axis. Something else I could do is I could say zero, zero, don't translate X and Y, but translate by the mouse along this, use mouse X to translate along the Z axis. So now you can see as I move the mouse left and right, the spinning rectangle is zooming in and out. Okay, yay! I'm taking way too long to go through all this stuff. Let's look at some of the other shapes. And by the way, uh, Coding Train viewer Simon Tiger uh, created a nice little GitHub gist that has a quick reference for all of these. So let me look at one of these. Like um, I really like the torus. Torus is um, essentially a donut, and it looks like a radius and a tube radius. Let's try that. So a torus, and let me give it a radius of 100 and a tube radius of 10. 
and go back to my sketch. And we can see, and let me not zoom it anymore, just rotate it. And you can see there's my nice little three-dimensional ring. So the tube radius is there's almost like the thickness of the donut, right? So if I were to make this 50, you can see that this is a much more delicious donut to eat because it's fatter around the, but, and the actual radius itself is the radius of that circle. So I could make that 50 with 10. You can see now I have a smaller one. So I, I could keep going through all of these. There's cone. I actually don't Well, Let's go back to that list. Um, there's plane, box, sphere, cylinder, cone, ellipsoid, torus. I encourage you to explore those on your own. Uh, take a break. See if you can. There's actually a nice example on the P5JS website, which I will go right now. Learn examples under uh, WebGL 3D. I'm going to go to geometries. So here we can very quickly see. Here are all of them. Let's see if we can figure this out. Plane, box, <laughs> cylinder, sphere. Taurus, cone. So uh, what I would say is like as an exercise, see if you can recreate this position, all of these shapes, rotate them, see if you can get all of these primitives to work. Um, you will notice here, why are they, they have this nice like rainbow color, and that has to do with material. So I think perhaps in the next video, I want to quickly look at material and texture to see um, how those work in 3D as well. Okay, thanks for watching.